Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to run a headless version of Godot, or run it without opening up a game window. I have the multiplayer node server project from the last video open here, because it's very simple. As always, I'll leave links to everything you need in the description. First I'm going to export the game into a folder called Builds, then open that folder in the File Explorer. This can be done easily by right-clicking the folder and clicking Open in File Manager. When I run this game, a window opens up as you'd expect. In order to run this headless, we need to launch the exe from the command line. To open the command prompt with this folder as the working directory, just type cmd up in the address bar. Enter the file name of your game. If your file has a long name, you can type out the first few letters and then hit tab. Make sure the extension is .exe. If your file name has spaces, it will need to go into pair quotations. After the file name, outside of the quotes if you had them, add dash dash display dash driver headless. We won't need audio for this server either, so we might as well add dash dash audio dash driver dummy with a capital D. In fact, we can just add dash dash headless as a shorthand for both of these. And now your game will run headless. But without the interface, you can no longer set the port or maximum number of players. We'll now need to enter these as arguments when we launch from the command line, which are then accessed through code. So let's head back into the editor. Having to export the project every time we want to test something can be annoying. Fortunately, we can enter our command line arguments from the editor. Go to project settings and turn on advanced, then click run under the editor section. And here's where we can enter them. We'll put in dash dash headless and a custom argument called test dash arg. Now there are two functions that will return command line arguments. Get command line args and get command line user args. They are both found on the OS object. The command line args are split into an array using spaces as the delimiter. I'll print the return value of both. As you can see, the args array contains the test argument and the user args array is empty. Neither of these functions will return engine arguments, only your own custom ones. The user args will only return arguments entered after a double dash. I'll head back into the project settings and add a double dash, then enter another custom arg called test user arg. Now you can see each array has an item. It's recommended to add your custom arguments after the double dash, so we'll only be using the get command line user args function. Let's first add the arguments for the values we need. The port number and max players with an equal sign between the key and value, with no spaces. Then we'll write some code that retrieves these values. I'll do this by iterating through the array, splitting each string into an array by the equal sign, and matching the first item with the keys we're looking for then setting the second item in the key value array to the corresponding variable. At the end of the ready function, we'll create the server using those variables. Another issue we have to resolve is that we no longer have any control over the server once it's running without an interface. I like to do this by creating an admin client. So I'll create a new project and add the basics for creating a client. This project will allow us to connect and kick players. I'll add a button called list players, connect its press signal, and in the function's body, I'll print multiplayer.getPeers. This will print a list of all the connected players' peer IDs. Next, I'll add a line edit called PID and a button called kick, and connect the press signal of that button. And in that signals function, I'll call an RPC called kick player that takes the PID of the player being kicked. And a side note on something I wish I knew before my first couple of networking videos, you can make remote procedural calls like this now. No more strings. This function can be left empty as it's only going to run on the server. So now on the server, I'll add a match and kick player RPC function with the any peer parameter and inside put the code to disconnect the player with that PID. Now this isn't very secure, so let's add an admin password. This password will be given as a command line argument, so let's create another variable and add it to the match statement. Then we'll add a password parameter to the kick player functions in both projects, and a line edit for entering that password on the admin client. Now in the server project, we'll check the password sent with a call against the one on the server before kicking the player. Now let's test this out again with all the args. I'll also add a few normal clients so we can try kicking them. Cool. Just a warning, storing passwords as plain text is really bad practice. Godot does have a crypto class for things like this, but it's out of this video's scope and honestly, you probably shouldn't be taking advice from me on this topic anyway. My understanding of it is very limited. In the next video, I'll show you how to set up a Linux virtual machine in the cloud so you can host this server persistently online. Hopefully this was helpful and thanks for watching.